mouth. The, um, the other vehicle that is, again, a made in BC document is uh, the representation agreement. And the representation agreement um, is effectively a healthcare document. But there are two types of representation agreements that are available in British Columbia. Uh, the first is the standard representation agreement, which or the what we commonly call the SEC 7 agreement, and then the enhanced representation agreement, or the Section 9 agreement. So I'll start with the Section 7 agreement. And these documents have really been designed and implemented um, for the benefit of folks that might have a diminished level of capacity. Um, so it's really intended for your son or daughter that doesn't meet sort of the higher test that might be required for a power of attorney or a Section 9 agreement. But it allows them to appoint a representative to help them make routine medical, personal care, financial, and legal decisions. Um, and the important thing here is you don't need a lawyer to develop one of these. Um, a representation agreement can be made without a lawyer. The Section 9 agreement is really the full-blown health care document um, that allows you to appoint someone, a representative, to make um, health care and personal care decisions. And these are our sort of advanced care and end of life discretion. Um, these documents, though, require a test of capacity that I would say equates to that of a will and or a uh, power of attorney. So they're not going to be accessible for a person with a disability that might have diminished capacity. Um, again, with the Section 9 agreement, you do not need a lawyer to make one of those documents. Okay? Was there, there is a question? a question. Yes, it says, can a fully capable person do a representation agreement? For example, a senior citizen parent giving the authorization to a son or vice versa. So one more time, if you could repeat that again for me, Angela. Can a fully capable person do a representation agreement? For example, a senior citizen parent giving the authorization to a son. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and, and that's, again, a common scenario where we'll have a senior, an elderly person. I think the key, though, is that there is capacity. Um, and I guess the question then is, well, if you're not using a lawyer, who tests capacity? Who actually decides that that individual has capacity? Um, and so um, there's a need for the person that's helping to design that agreement to ensure that you know that document is going to be valid because we don't want to have a circumstance where it might be challenged um, in the future um, by someone that says, well, you know, grandma never had capacity, you know, to actually design that agreement and appointing that individual was without any sort of real authority. So, and that's where this gray area around capacity and enabling uh, is, is with respect to the representation agreement, you know, the intention is that these are really supportive documents. They're not intended to be alternate decision-making documents. Um, there's a, an understanding that even if you have a Section 9 agreement, and you are, let's say, in a medical environment, an ER, the medical personnel have a duty to look to you first, always, to determine whether you can make decisions. They are not to automatically go to the representative. They have to work collaboratively with them. So you have some checks and balances, knowing that that representative is going to be there in the presence of other medical professionals and those medical professionals have a duty to look to the person that designed the representation agreement first. And so I think that's the checks and balance right. that's in place. And remember, the Section 9 agreement is only intended for healthcare. It does not cover 
financial or legal affairs, that's the power of attorney document. Right. There's a, I think, is it a comment? Um, oh, right. It's somebody just saying that the Family Support Institute does support people to do representation agreements and that they got one done by their sister and now they're planning on getting one done by their other family members. And so, yeah, we do have a few staff um, who are trained in the representation agreement process and can support people as well as referring them over sometimes to NIDIS. Right, yeah. yeah, no, those are great resources and, um, you know, both uh, your organization and NIDIS do a wonderful job of uh, helping families plan, whether it's a Section 7 or a Section 9 agreement.